Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's build something pretty simple but also pretty essential to so many games, let's enable the player to climb ladders. We're going to cover two methods, the first one just approaching the ladder and move forward to climb up, so very much like Half-Life, another one where you approach the ladder and then press a button to grab onto it, so very much like in Elden Ring. We're going to cover both methods and both working in first and third person. Okay, so let's do it. If you use Unity in any way, definitely get my Ultimate Unity Overview course. It will teach you how to use the many tools and features that Unity has so you can be more effective and make better games faster. There's no need to build something yourself from scratch if there's already a built-in tool that works great. Unity has tons of them that you might not know about. The course already has 15 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine, and is constantly getting free updates. Or if you prefer step-by-step -step courses on making a specific game, check out my Builder Defender course. I also have a full course only on using visual scripting. There isn't a single line of code in any of those games. And if you're past the beginner stage and you want a guided path to help you make the jump from beginner to advanced, then get my turn-based strategy course. It will help you massively improve your programming and game dev skills. On all courses, I'm always available in the Q&A section, answering all of your questions every single day. So check them out with the link in the description. Okay, so here's my starting scene. I've got my character in first person and I can move and look around. Over here, I've got a ladder leading up to this container and then this big ladder going to the top of that building. Then I also have another character controller, this one in third person. Again, same thing, I can move around and look at the ladder. For these character controllers, I'm using the official Unity Star assets. These are super awesome free assets made by Unity. I cover them in detail in another video. You have the first person and the third person controllers. Then for the visuals over here, I'm using the Synthia Apocalypse pack. Really great pack, perfect for a zombie or post-apocalypse type of game. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. Okay, so let's begin making our leather logic. First, let's handle the simpler method. We want to just approach the leather and start climbing up. So here is my scene, and over here I've got the leather object. First thing we need is to actually identify if there's a leather in front. For that, we're going to be using a raycast, so we need to make sure that this leather object has a collider, which it does. Then for identifying what collider we're looking at, for that we can identify it by the layer method, so we could put all of the leathers on their own layer. That would work, it would be more performant, but using the layer method can be a bit tricky if you have too many objects since you have a limited number of layers. So let's use the script method, which is much more adaptable. So let's just create a new C -sharp script, call this leather. Then here I'm going to go inside the prefab so that it applies to all of them and just attach the script. Okay, so that's it. We don't need to write anything on this script, just leave it as empty. This is only going to be used to identify this object. So now let's go into the player script. So on the first person controller, Let's open up the first person script. So here it is. Again, all of this is based on the official Unity star assets. I just refactored it to match my coding style. So let's go down to find the movement logic. So here it is, the move function. We first test if we are sprinting or not. Then we get move vector to test if it is empty or not. After that, we use that to calculate the speed, then blend some animations. Then we've got the input. Then we use the input to rotate the transform. And finally over here, here we have the actual move. So before this, let's fire a raycast towards the direction where we are moving. So we're going to go into physics and fire a raycast. Now we want to fire a raycast towards the direction where we are moving. And we want to do it by a small distance, just to make sure we don't start climbing from too far away. However, also the way that the player is set up, if we look in the editor, over here for the first person controller, we can see the way the player is set up is the origin is right there on the bottom. So if we test exactly from this point, we might accidentally hit the floor or some tiny pebbles. So when doing the raycast, let's just lift up the point by a little bit. So over here, we do a raycast. We need an origin and direction. So like I said, let's start from this transform dot position and lift it up by a little bit. So let's define a float for the avoid floor distance and put it at something small, maybe just 0.1f. So we lift it up by this bit. Then for direction, it's going to be the target direction. So this one is based on the player input. Then let's just grab the raycast hit, so out for the raycast hit. And finally distance, so we don't grab from too far, so we float, let's call it the leather grab distance. And let's grab the leather within, let's say, 0.4 units. So this, like this. Actually here we want to lift it up a bit, so plus the vector 3 dot up, multiplied by that. Alright, so this is our raycast. Let's do a quick test, so if this one succeeds, let's do something. So we're here, just a debug.log. Let's go into the raycast set and print out the transform. Okay, so with this, let's test. So here I am, I can move around, and if I approach and I push towards the leather, yep, there you go, it does identify the leather. And if I push towards the container, yep, the container. And over here, this couch, yep, it does find it. 
Okay, great. So we are correctly identifying which object is in front. Now let's use a try get component to identify and see if it is a leather. So over here, if we have this, let's go into this recasted transform. And in there, let's call try get component. Try to get the component of type leather. And if it is a leather, then let's change the movement to go up instead of forward. So the thing that actually moves over here, the control without move, uses the target direction, so we can modify this. And to go up instead of forward, let's just swap out the Y for the Z. So over here, let's just set the target direction dot Y equals the Z. Then let's zero out the Z. And optionally, you can also zero out the X movement if you don't want the player to slide left to right when on a leather. This one is optional, either you want this or not. It's very much a design question. Okay, so this is it. Now, due to the way that this specific controller is written, it has a separate vertical velocity to handle jumping and grounding. And then over here on the testing function, it also has an is grounded boolean. So also need to make sure to set these so that it doesn't seem like the character is flying. So just set is grounded manually into true and set the vertical velocity to zero to clear out the gravity. Again, this part is specific to the way this controller works, but for whatever controller you're using, the logic will be very similar. It just depends on how you're handling the jump in gravity. So with just this, it might already be working. So let's test. So here we are, let's go approach the ladder and keep pushing forward. And yep, there you go, it does indeed start moving up. All right, great. So the character does identify the ladder and does climb up. It's a bit too slow, but we'll fix that in a bit. However, the main issue is if I move back, the character falls instead of climbing the ladder down. So we're going to fix that in a bit as well. Now, if you do this and you see the character constantly falling down instead of just staying over here on the ladder, if you see that, then like I said, that is going to depend on how you're handling gravity. If the character doesn't climb or climbs a bit and then falls down again, if that happens, then the issue is you probably need to disable gravity while holding onto the ladder. Now, we're going to add some logic where we need to keep track of the gravel ladder state, so let's keep track of that. And in a super complex game, perhaps you could use a proper state machine to handle it. But over here, this controller is super simple, so I'm just going to use a basic boolean. So just here on the player, let's make a private bool. Let's just call it is climbing ladder. Okay, got a simple boolean. By default, it starts off as false. Now let's make two functions. So let's make a private void, call it grab leather. And let's make another one, private void drop leather. On grab, we're going to set the boolean, so set it to true. And again, depending on how you handle gravity, this is where you would disable it. Then up here, when we touch the leather, let's set this one to true. So we grab the leather. And then we're going to run this logic if we are grabbing the leather. So after the raycast, let's test if is climbing leather. If we are climbing the leather, then let's run this logic. And like we saw a while ago, the issue is that it was climbing the leather way too slow. That's due to how the speed variable is calculated. So it basically takes the input, takes how much it's actually moving. So the way it works, it gets a bit broken if we're moving straight towards the wall, but we can manually set the speed. So down here, if we are climbing the ladder, let's manually set the speed and let's set it to the target speed, which is the one that is defined up here. So again, on this controller, it gets the target speed and basically if it is sprinting, use the speed, if not, use the normal speed. Okay, so just with this, the rest should already be working. So if we touch the ladder, we grab the ladder. And if we are climbing, we just keep climbing. Okay, so here let's approach the ladder. And if I go, yep, there you go, it does move up. And actually by doing this, by adding that boolean, we also fix the issue of the player falling when moving backwards. So if I move backwards, yep, there you go, it does climb down. So now I can climb up or climb down. And I can also hold on here and nope, I do not fall down. Okay, so far so good. However, the next issue is if I push all the way up to the top, yep, there you go, as you can see, the game is now broken. The character is right now holding on to an invisible ladder so I can climb all the way up to infinity and there you go, everything is broken. So at some point we need to let go of the ladder. Now to do this is actually going to be pretty simple. We just need to run different logic if we are already climbing and if not. So over here, if we are not is climbing ladder. So if we are not climbing, then we're going to try to grab it. So we run this logic and if not, then we are climbing the ladder. So if we are climbing, let's do a raycast to see if we should let go. Let's do the exact same raycast. So we still got the avoid forward distance. We still got the leather grab distance. Okay. We do a raycast. And if it has the component, then we're not going to do anything. We're going to keep holding onto it. But if it does not have the component, so if in front there's a collider that is not a leather, if so, then we're going to drop from our leather. 
And also, if there's no hit, if there's no call letter in front, we're also going to drop our letter. Then for the drop letter function, over here we just reset this one back into false. Okay, so just like this, let's see. So let's go approach the ladder and climb up, and once we get to the top, if there you go, it kind of works. I got up here and I did indeed let go of the ladder. But as you can see, it looks quite a bit janky, so if I get to the top, look at that, look at that jittering constantly going up and down. The issue with that is because as soon as we get to the top of the ladder, we let go, which means we fall down by a tiny bit, so we grab it again, then we move up, let go, grab, and so on. To fix this, we can pretty much just as soon as we get to the top, we push the player upwards and forwards in order to make them jump over that tiny gap. Now, like I can mention this controller already has a vertical velocity, this is how it handles the jumping. So I can just set this, so when letting go of the ladder, let's set this one to something. So with this, let's test. So now if I go and I approach and I get to the top, and if there you go, there's a nice jump and everything looks much more natural. There you go, just like this. Okay, so far so good. However, with this extra logic, we actually broke the going down logic. Now if I climb the ladder and now I want to go down and I push back, and there you go, that's the issue. Pretty much it jumps back. The problem is that over here on this raycast, we're still using the same target direction. So if we're holding onto the ladder and we do a raycast pointing to the target direction, which in this case is going to be backwards, then obviously there's nothing behind us, so this is going to fall, so that is why we drop the ladder and add a jump. We can solve this by instead of using the current target direction, we just cache the direction when we first grab the ladder. So let's go up here to make a field to store that. So let's make a private, a vector3, called the last grab ladder direction. So we have this, and then down here, let's go into our grab ladder function, and over here, let's receive this one, and we're going to store it. Okay, so then over here on the grab ladder, when we call this function, let's pass in the target direction when we last grab the ladder. So we do that, and then when we are climbing the ladder for this rake, instead of using the current target direction, let's use this one, the last grab ladder direction. That way, even if we try moving backwards, we're still going to make the rake cast forwards. So let's see. So here we are, let's try going up. Okay, I'm holding onto the ladder. Now I go back, and there you go, I can go down, up and down, and so on. All right, great, so far so good. Now for the next issue is if we are holding onto the ladder, and I go down, I try going down to the floor, so now I'm still pressing down, but I'm not letting go of the leather. So the character is pretty much just colliding with the floor instead of letting go and moving backwards. So when we have this, when you have the character moving down and colliding with the floor, we should really let go. So for this, we're going to need a different raycast. First of all, we need to test if we are climbing down the leather, and if so, we want to raycast down instead of towards the leather. So that means we need to know if we are climbing down. And thankfully, one way that we can do this is with the super useful vector3.product. This lets you calculate if a vector is pointing to a similar or opposite direction. For example, this is exactly the crucial part to making the backstab system that I covered in another video. So here we can simply calculate the vector3 dot, and we calculate that, taking into account the current target direction, as well as the last grab ladder direction. Let's do a debug.log on this to see what it says. Okay, let's see. So here, let's go, and as I approach the ladder and I move up, there you go, I've got a positive value, and if I climb down, there you go, negative value. And again, this one works even if I'm pointing to the right and pointing back, there you go, it always works perfectly. It even works if I'm actually facing the other way. Now if I press S, I'm moving up the ladder, and if I press W, I'm moving down the ladder. Okay, so with this we do know if we are climbing up or down. Now over here we just need some different raycast logic. So over here we test if this, if the vector 3 dot, if it is under zero, meaning we are climbing down the ladder. If so, then here let's do a raycast pointing down. So let's do a physics.raycast. And now here we can really just use the transform.position. Let's point down, so vector 3 dot down. Let's keep track of the raycast hit, raycast hit. And finally for the distance, so let's find a float for the leather floor drop distance. Put that something small, maybe 0.1f. So for this distance. Here actually we need a different name, so the floor raycast hit, okay. So if we have this, if this collider does hit something, so that means there's a collider right underneath the player. If so, then we simply drop the leather. Okay, so that's it, let's test. So here I am, now let's go pick up the ladder and go up. Now I walk down, and as soon as I get the floor, yep, there you go, it does drop. All right, great, so I can go all the way up top. Yep, it does work, I can pick it up in there and go down, and yep, it does work. I can jump, pick it up in the middle, continue, and yep, everything works perfectly. 
And to make all this work, it just takes the unleather component, and since I attached that component into the prefab, that means all of these leathers are already climbable. So I can now go up to this really tall building and start climbing. And once I get to the top, yep, there you go, look at that, really nice view. So I managed to get to the point, and now from here I can do anything I want. Alright, awesome! Now without working, it's pretty trivial to handle the other interaction method, where it requires a button input instead of automatic. All it takes is over here when we are not climbing the ladder. When we're not doing that, instead of doing it automatic, we're simply going to require a button input. So let's go if input dot, let's say, get key down. Let's say, just like in many PC games, when you press the E key for interact. So that's it, that's pretty much all it takes. So we press the E key and we're going to run the exact same code. So now if I go and I approach the ladder and I keep walking towards it, nope, there you go, I cannot automatically climb. Now if I press the E, there you go, I start climbing up and down and everything works perfectly. Now you would obviously add some kind of visual button prompt so the player knows when they can grab the ladder. As long as they are close enough and they press the button, there you go, they can climb. So here it is, the same logic fully working with that second method. And for letting go either up top or on the bottom, for that, you could also make it input based, but personally I think it makes more sense to be more dynamic. But still, it would be the same thing, instead of doing it automatic, just do it based on a button press. And finally, here is all that same exact logic working in third person. It really is all the same, you just test the movement direction and grab the leather. I also add a really nice leather climb animation to make it look a bit nicer in third person. Everything else is very much the same. So here it is, a fully functioning leather system with two input methods working in both first and third person. You can download the project files and play around the project for yourself. And if you want these visuals, it's from the Synthi Apocalypse pack, so check the link in the description. Again, if you use Unity in any way, definitely get my Ultimate Unity Overview course, or if you want to make a certain type of game, check out the others. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.